Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Siege of Port Hudson, located in East Baton Rouge Parish, Louisiana, between Union General Nathaniel P. Banks and his 19th Corps, consisting of about the 40,000 men, against Confederate General Franklin Gardner and his troops of the Department of Mississippi and East Louisiana, which made up about 7,500 men. This battle occurred from the 22nd of May to the 9th of July, 1863. The siege of Port Hudson began in the middle of May as Union General Nathaniel P. Banks moved to attack Port Hudson from the north. He was supported by additional troops coming from the south, catching the 7,500 Confederate defenders in a pincer attack. The only advantage the Confederates had was that they were securely behind almost five miles of earthworks. The siege started on May 27th with a full Union assault along the entirety of the defensive fortifications. The Union had not made any specific plans, though, and had not taken into account how difficult the terrain was. This meant when the Confederate forces were pushed hard on the north walls, the Union troops were pushed back with an unexpected ease, especially around Commissary Hill, along Telegraph Road, and Fort Desperate. They had attacked too early, while the rest of the Union forces hadn't even fully moved into place. The Confederates then used those northern forces to defend the eastern attack, and by the end of the night, the Union was unsuccessful and had to return back to their lines. It is estimated in the first day of fighting, the Union lost more than 2,000 men compared to the 500 the Confederates lost. It should also be noted that a large portion of these losses were from men of the Louisiana Native Guards, consisting of free black men from New Orleans. Union General Banks realized he was unable to take the port so easily and settled into ordering the snipers and artillery to keep a constant pressure on the port, which continued until June 13th. On June 13th, more reinforcements had arrived, and with the influx of these troops, Banks began to feel that he had the power to take the fort. He issued a demand to Confederate troops to surrender. It is apocryphally said that Confederate Major General Franklin Gardner replied, My duty requires me to defend this position, and therefore I declined to surrender. However, the exact words were not recorded. Banks ordered the artillery to commence again with a full attack on June 14th, led by U.S. Brigadier General Halbert E. Payne, Godfrey Weitzel, and William Dwight. Even with these reinforcements, though, the Union was unable to pierce the defenses and lost an additional 1,800 men. Union troops waited out the rest of June and into the first part of July. They used the time to dig trenches to move up their own artillery. During this time, the Confederate morale was still pretty high, even though they had to have eaten their own mules and were reduced to eating rats. However, it should be noted that it wasn't the Union forces at all that forced the surrender. The Confederate forces surrendered when Confederate General Gardner received word that Confederate command itself had surrendered at Vicksburg. The loss of the city of Vicksburg meant that the Port Hudson purpose was no longer needed. It made no sense for him to try and maintain it when it had no value. So on July 9th, Gardner's Confederate troops surrendered. Final casualties for the Union troops were 10,000 men killed or wounded, 5,000 of them due to the battle, 5,000 of them due to the disease of the area. While the Confederates suffered total wipeout, they lost 7,500 men, including 750 dead and wounded to battle, 250 dead to disease, the other 6,500 had surrendered. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.